Do you find yourself captivated by the inexplicable, entranced by enigmas, and tantalized by the unknown? We are Shane and Josh Waters, brothers who will weave you through tales that have mystified us for years. From haunted hotels to inexplicable disappearances, With a gripping narrative, we invite you to join us on a journey into realms of the unexplained. So, armchair detectives, curious minds, and seekers of the strange, it's time to put on your headphones and dim the lights. Dive into the uncanny world of the Mystery Inc. podcast and prepare for a journey into the unknown that you'll never forget. And remember, some mysteries are better left unsolved, but not unexplored. In the prohibition years of Minneapolis, Minnesota, there was an underworld. Gangs of bootleggers, bandits, sluggers, and murderers roamed the streets and conducted their business. One of the most legendary figures of that time was Isidore Blumenfeld, also known as Kid Can. He began as a newsboy and grew into the most notorious gangster Minneapolis has to offer, and either a psychopath or the nicest guy ever, depending on who you ask. Bullsteadland explores this world. Join me, Amy, and my co-host, Heather, as we journey through this era of prohibition, bank robberies, empty promises, and murder. There we go. Oh, shit. (laughs) There we go. (laughs) Something's not right here. Something's not right. Ghosty fam, Amy here. Welcome to The Activity Continues, a podcast where three soul friends talk about all things paranormal. Ghosts, hauntings, psychics, movies and TV shows, especially The Dead Files, and other spooky and spooky adjacent things. We also like to interview people in the paranormal community, as well as past Dead Files clients and other interesting people. Sometimes we even tell your stories. I hope you enjoy the show. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you for joining us again. Today we are going to be talking about Controlled, which is from season seven and is episode three on both platforms. It's my little celebration. (laughs) AP will tell us why this is important uh, because she chose this episode. So AP, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you chose it and then whatever we are warning people about today? Absolutely. Thanks, Megan. It is a super scientific process that I did, (laughs) which was, hmm, what is my favorite number? 21. And what goes into 21? So I looked at our document to see if we had covered season seven, episode three, because if you multiply those together, you get 21. So that's why we picked it today. (laughs) I had no idea what it was about, where it was located, what was going on in it. All I knew was that the name was controlled and it was season seven, episode three. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Uh, Content warning for this is, you know, we've got some uh, horrific things that happen in history. There's racism, lynching, uh, talk of suicide. And we also have a lovely adoption in this episode. As always, check your show notes because we never know what we're going to talk about. Yeah. I doubt we'll go too far into the mm-hmm. horrific lynching. Probably not. I'd, I'd prefer no. not to. No. I would prefer not to as well. Yeah. It was pretty brutal. Housekeeping. Housekeeping. Um, this would be our last call for ghost stories to be read and played on our live show. 
And we want to also announce that our friend, our shaman friend, which I never thought I would be able to say. I know. I feel <laughs> so like cool. a shaman. Her I'm like Leah. a celebrity friend. <laughs> I know. She has a name, you guys. <laughs> I know. Leah Marie will be joining us for our live show. She's going to be talking with us for a little bit and mm-hmm. telling us what she does and all that, which we already know. But she'll be telling all the people in the room that probably have never heard of us. Uh, <laughs> although Flip Phone Jody will be there. Ooh. I believe Flip UFO Mary Jody? will be there. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. I haven't UFO seen her Mary. in like literal years. I have not seen Flip. Does she still have a flip phone? Yes, she does. Perfect. She'll show it to everybody. I'm sure she's very proud of it. And uh, and then I think Dave's going to be in town, too. So I am bringing at least three friends. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yes. Do so, they know we talk about them all the time on the podcast? I tell them, but they don't listen to our show. That's hurtful. Jody always goes, you know, I should listen to that. I'm you like, should. you know, you should. Especially because so, you're one of our main characters. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but yeah, so she, uh, she'll be there. So then after we ch- chat with Leah for a little bit, then she's going to go off into another spot and do readings for people. Mm-hmm. You can sign up for those and all of the details and the prices and all that for those will be on our page that we have for the show. I will mention that this live show sadly will not include AP. She has family, family commitments. commitments. Yes. Yes. She had things that have been scheduled for a very long time before this show was scheduled. The, the, so My whole fall has been scheduled for yeah. a very long time. So yeah. we were just, just discussing a like, time to get go, together just go. and it's like <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I just uh, wanted to let you know that she probably won't be there. She may pop in at the end or something to say hi or something, but it's going to be me and Megan yeah. running the show. Like old times, like old times. Yep. So we'll or see. it would probably so be if I got a chance to jump in, it would probably be at the beginning and then oh, leaving. The so oh, okay. Okay. fingers crossed. I don't know what time things are happening, but right. at least it's a happy celebration for yes. family commitment stuff. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's good. So, and you know what? And if this goes great, we'll, we'll do, do another again. one. We'll yeah. do another one. Mm-hmm. I would love to do one at the bird. Mm hmm. Bird, 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 the word, really word, bird. That yeah. is that I do love the bird. That would be fun. So if this goes well. Yes. We'll so if one. it goes well is up to our listeners. Okay, let's stop saying yeah. if and just say <laughs> so, when. Let's yeah. put the positive out there. When rather than putting, that's right. That's right. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're right. Okay. I'm going to have to send you two both messages that morning and be like, stop saying if. <laughs> Shut up yeah. and just do it. You're going to be fine. You do this every day. You talk. Control the controllables. Yeah. You can't control those other things. Right. So don't worry about them. Don't let them take up space in your head. It's yeah. easier said than done, but you can't control them. That's true. That's I true. I mean, there is such limited space in my head as it is. We can't. Yes. <laughs> we I don't write, don't write, it, extra write it down. It. Write it down. Burn it in a candle. Sage yeah. candle, probably. Just, yeah. Just for. Yeah. I still mm-hmm. have my sage that shit. I do it's too. Almost I haven't even out, lit though. My... <gasps> mine is almost out. I oh, I light it my... all the time. Oh, I, it's I, my... I don't light candles that often. Yeah. I light I, them all the time. I do, but I, I it's in the bathroom to help keep the the people from the portal out. I'm glad you said the people from the portal because I was going, the smells from the potty? I mean, uh-huh. no. <laughs> <laughs> we got people from the potty. Uh, people <laughs> from the portal poop from the potty. Yep, yep. <laughs> Okay. All strong. right. So we're going to get down to it. This was AP's choice. Yes. AP is going to run this show, this baby, and she's going to start us off with an overview. Take yeah. it away. Today, we are headed to Estelle Springs in Tennessee and meeting our homeowner slash client, Emily. She lives here with her husband, Chris, her three-year-old's adopted son, and her younger sister, Abby, with their four year her four-year-old son. Emily and Chris have lived here for four years and I don't recall if they said when exactly this activity really started for them, but she's mostly concerned about her son as it feels like things are targeting the children. Emily shares that there are classic signs, hearing voices, feeling like you're being watched, shadow people, mood swings, and that her husband really seems to be changing. And of course, Steve has to throw in a can't be good for the marriage. So we have a (laughs) bingo card here, everyone. Emily's biggest concern is her son. And later on, uh, Steve meets Abby, who reiterates that Chris definitely seems different, that the kids are seeing things, and her son describes seeing something like vampires in capes. So 
makes me think of like Sesame Street with Count Dracula for getting the vampire with cape there. <laughs> and the one, and the two, two, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> and then we meet Chris, the husband, who definitely seems dismissive. He acknowledges that something is happening, but since he can't see it, it's not real. He talks about experiences of hearing things, but just assumes it's the cat. During this time, we have the back and forth with Amy. She's being physically attacked by someone or something she claims is a nutty, screaming woman who is physical and does creepy stuff. This woman actually punched her in the stomach. Amy then also describes a weird, creepy thing that crawls on all fours and doesn't sound human. Says this sucker is really evil. She can't tell if it's a demon, but says it influences people and says murder, 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 about a thousand times. That was really funny. She is concerned that potentially there's a presence of Native American spirits that are not mentally stable. Steve starts his investigation with what might be a questionable call of speaking to the sons of the former homeowner who died in the garage. And the conversation is in the garage. We know it was carbon monoxide poisoning listed as an accident talked about as a suicide but is it potentially a murder we don't know amy talks about the saturation of death in the garage she feels strangled a loss of control and darkness next we hear about uh steve digging through old records and coming up with a family with you guessed it multiple child deaths in the family this family had the land from the 1870s to 1920s and as we speak with a genealogist not a gynecologist. We learned like about the pause the, for that too. That I was, was waiting nice. for it. We learned that there was very little about their causes of death. We get only one name out of the four because Tennessee did not require death certificates at the time. But it makes you think, is there something else going on here? And Amy jumps back and sees this violent woman again. But now she's realizing that this woman is trying to protect the children, not attack the children. She's trying to protect them from a living male. So Steve then goes off with the genealogist and we start talking about the cemetery that they're in, which was a four whites only her, the landowner at the time. I love that. Yep. So we don't really get a lot of information uh, through that whole section, but we do have Amy getting a whole bunch of souls from a bunch of different time periods. And she's very confused as to what's going on. Steve then jumps to a local professor to talk about, of course, a brutal case involving a black man in the 19 teens. He was attacked. He fought back. You can assume what happened. Amy at this point is channeling somebody who feels like they're being tortured and they cannot escape it. Then we jump into the reveal and Amy states what we rarely hear her say. This was one of the worst investigations I've ever done. That's why we're in the barn in a barn tonight, because there's no way in hell I'm going back to your property. I don't think we've ever heard that from her. As she describes her walk, she describes the uh, woman who is fixated on protecting the children. She's violent and she does not like the adults in the house and the clients share their experiences. Amy has the picture come out. So Steve looks at it and goes, turns aptly to Chris and says, Oh, this is what this person wants to do to you, apparently. And the woman in the picture, the spirit in the picture, is punching or uppercutting a male in the gut. Then Steve shares a little bit more about the Martin family. This whole area is disjointed because we learn some things that don't feel connected to what we saw in the episode. But supposedly the dead woman is Edna, one of John Martin's surviving three children. Then they start talking about the vampires and hooded figures that the kids see and the shadow figures the adults see. Amy says, yeah, those are Native Americans. They're drawn to people who are predisposed to depression, anxiety, and anger, which apparently is Chris. And they're trying to do damage. They're trying to get Chris to hurt his family or in the case be a family annihilator, it sounds like. Hence why Edna is trying to protect the children. Amy Amy gives them some recommendations that start off from, you know, yeah, that's pretty doable too. That's going to be a little bit tougher. So do they follow her instructions? Stay tuned to find out if the activity continues. There was a lot in this episode. There was yeah, a lot. There was. There and, really was. And I don't know about like with you guys, did you feel in this episode that, you know, when we, I think it was Laura we talked with where she was like, there was more spirits than what they showed in the mm-hmm. episode. Yes. I think it was Laura. But it, that's what it felt like. Like 
it felt like what Amy was trying to, what she was feeling and saying overall mm -hmm. didn't quite connect back to everybody. Like what's going, like we didn't connect that the old man maybe was influenced to take his own life or whatever mm -hmm. those sorts of things were. So that was my right. just overall thought on the whole thing. Yeah. And maybe it was a case where they talked about it, but again, they cut mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Very likely. It's always hard to know because mm -hmm. that does happen. I mean, I thought the reveal was only 15 minutes, guys. <laughs> true. They cut down, no, 10 of those minutes. Yeah. Very true. Very true. Yeah. Who uh, was that? Was was it uh, Diane that said it was like, she's like, it was like two, maybe three hours. Mm -hmm. And some of the ones we've heard, they're like, oh, it was 14 hours. Yes. You know, yeah. we were there until 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, can't imagine. Oh, yeah. Sounds exhausting. I know. Absolutely. I do love how Steve has to start us off with a hysterical woman. <laughs> like, yeah. Thanks, Steve. And I wrote, I wrote, well, maybe it's her time of the month. Yeah. Uh, obviously. The, I, shouldn't obviously. Have even, I shouldn't have even added that. We all knew. <laughs> <laughs> we all knew. Yeah. Just PMSing. Mm-hmm. Crazy woman. And, uh, like, and as soon as Amy gets there, She's like, this person is running at me screaming and she's getting hit and punched. And that's awful. That was hard. It, I, she like yeah. literally bent over because she got grabbed in yeah. the mm -hmm. arm. And yeah. I feel like she was can, like, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. like where she is in the first half of the episode to where she is in the reveal. Like you can definitely tell like when she's got that open channeling aspect, because mm -hmm. As Amy, you said like last time, she just gets her facial expressions mm -hmm. get so dramatic and mm -hmm. and twisted at, almost at times where you're like, is that really her there anymore? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, sometimes it's hard to tell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything you guys had right off the bat with Emily as we were having the conversation, who seemed like a perfectly normal, yeah. Yeah, level-headed woman yeah, who is just concerned Maybe she about was... stuff going on. Maybe she was hysterical because it's attacking <laughs> her child. Yes. Yeah. Think of that. Yeah. Yeah. My son got bit today by another toddler and I was super upset, like yeah. angry mm -hmm. at this toddler. I can't imagine. And describing what, you know, she says her he's four. He wakes up screaming in the night. Three. He's trembling. Oh, I thought he was three. The, he's I mean, three. I thought he was four. The nephew is oh, four. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, Abby's I mean, kid. I. How do you? Yes, I, I, mm -hmm. yeah, no wonder she's hysterical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. quote. Well, Steve. and it, it sounds like she's very frustrated <laughs> because it doesn't sound like her husband claims later on he's supporting her and stuff. But it, when she's talking at the beginning, it's not, doesn't mm -hmm. seem quite the same. Yeah. 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 I don't yeah. have a lot of notes on that part. No, there's mm -mm. not a ton at the beginning because there's just it she's so normal. I yeah. like not yeah. saying other people aren't normal, but there's she not... didn't have a book on the coffee table that her <laughs> father wrote about and, her experience. <laughs> and there wasn't there wasn't like a bunch of like and you know, Steve doesn't ever go you boozing or mm -hmm. you taking anything. Yeah. You know, he's she's describing things that we've heard people talk about she's upset mm -hmm. and worried about her child which mm -hmm. also we you know we hear she sleeps with three night lights mm -hmm. i okay. hate it being light in my room i want it to yeah. be dark as <laughs> to be dark fair i am a little afraid of the dark and <laughs> i don't like it to be really dark so i get i don't three is excessive but like well, unless how big are they? If they're little, hmm, yeah, maybe. I will say when we took away the baby monitor in Jordan's room, one, I was upset because I could no longer see if he was kidnapped. But two, I did like the light that it gave my room. And then it mm. went dark. I, I had put, trouble. I'm not going to lie. I had trouble sleeping the first couple of nights. I'm sure. Because you have that anxiety mm -hmm. about him. Mostly because yep. the dark. And the, it was, it was, 50 I 50. put tape over like my fan has a little blue light that tells oh, you like which yeah. level it's on. I have tape over that to dim the light. <laughs> oh my gosh. The light, light, the light off of my little cable box in my room is too bright for me too. And mm -hmm. I sometimes put stuff over that. Mm -hmm. I've been there before, but I don't know. In my old age, I get afraid of the dark. Don't yeah, laugh Cause you're at me. so old. You're I so will old. be 40 in two months, not even a month. 40. I don't know, Megan. Um, we do have an age 
limit on this podcast. So is it 40? I might have it's only to for Megan. You. It's only for <laughs> Megan because I'm a little older than that. But and I'll be there is, next like, year. I don't think of you as being older than me. Like to me, you're like you're, 40. I don't think so either. And I don't you know don't what happened. you look older. Thank you. Like you don't look like I don't know what old. happened. But don't, don't act your age is no, how you stay no. looking young. I'm immature. That's what I always tell people. It's because I'm immature. Well, but I mean, a, I honestly, you don't it's look. It's also because all of us older. before all these like fancy regimens for skincare came around, we used St. Ives. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We used like Noxema. You know, yeah. Oh my uh, God, I miss bar, the smell of Noxema. You can still get Noxema. You can? Yeah, I think so. Megan's going I've on Amazon it. right now. I <laughs> need Noxema. It because... smells. I used to put it on sunburn. Oh, sure. Slather it on sunburn. Never it just it. smells like my youth. Like yeah. if you were to smell Noxema, I, that would unlock a memory that yeah. I don't even know exists. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm sure. I'm sure. But I'm pretty sure that's why like we all look so young is because we took all those old layers of our skin off our face for a long period of time. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how many, I I still wash my face with whatever I wash my body with in the shower. Mm -hmm. I wash my face with something nicer at night before I go to bed. Oh, see, I don't even do that. In the morning, I wash my face right now. I'm using Irish spring. I wash my face with Irish spring. It's fine. Yeah. Deter the deer and rabbits. The jade rollers that you put in the freezer. I don't know. I have one of those. I have the gua sha. If I did, I would never remember to do it. No, I would never remember to do it. Yeah. Um, Back to the nightlight, though, for a sec. I got something on Timu, Timu, however the fuck you're supposed to say it. (laughs) Timu. Timu. I like Timu. I like Timu. I'm going to say Timu. I like Timu because it, or Timu, because it's like Team You. Anyway. (laughs) Yay. But Team Not the Children Workers. (laughs) I know. The thing is, you're going to buy those products anyway. If you buy them on Amazon, you're just going to get them cheaper at Timu. It's the same fucking product. Yeah. Anyway, I bought um, a solar. I don't remember if that's what they called it. Nightlight. It's a nightlight. Uh, it's a light that you, if you, know, you don't have to put it on. I guess you do have to put it on at night. But it's uh, a little, it's a little, it's like a projector. Okay. It's a projector. And it comes with a bunch of little discs. Uh-huh. And you can take them out, put them in the projector, and it projects it onto your wall or your ceiling. Oh, my God. Okay. Come and they're on. all solar systems. So it's oh. like the Andromeda, oh the my moon, God. The, a nebula. There's like 15 of these little slides. I want that. You should get it. It's I'm going to so look on Team U. Cool. I will send you the Team link you. to the one I got. Team U. <laughs> and me. So back to the... So back to the... Uh, the task uh, back, back to here. Oh, we have Emily talking with... Uh, Steve in her son's bedroom. She describes seeing a shadow figure and Steve just goes, describe what it looked like. Oh my God, Steven. Um, I, I think it's like in the name. Shadow. Shadow. <laughs> a figure, figure. In shadow form. <laughs> She's like, it's dark. I could see its head and shoulders. It was solid. I mean, just... what does he want? Well, I think it's about six, six. Blue it's actually eyes. silver. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say, I feel so bad for her right now yeah. because fear for like your child is like an all consuming fear. Like, you yeah. know me, I have, I just had a nightmare the other night that I left Jordan somewhere and I told him to walk home and I drove back like panicking in the dream. Like, what was I thinking? I told him to walk home and I saw him just walking down the street. And I picked him up and I hugged him. But like the panic you feel. Was this after, was this last night after your car broke down? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's oh, that yep. makes sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways, uh, my point is I feel so bad for her because you yeah. can tell like she's really well, like going it, through it. Okay. Yeah. So we're sitting yeah. in Eli's room looking at stuff and they're standing in front of his closet. And that's like what I recognize is look at all the bright, yes. happy colors mm-hmm. behind them. And you know that those are full of like dinosaurs uh-huh. and reptiles and sports and superheroes, superheroes. like Ninja Turtles. Yeah. And- Things like that. And mm-hmm. it's like all these stupid things like to attack the weak and mm-hmm. defendless. And that's why I said they're just bullies. They're just supernatural mm-hmm. bullies. Yeah. Just, but I, yeah. I totally bullies. recognize the piggy bank that's behind when Steve is standing there. <laughs> and there's a there's a piggy bank up there. And I had a purple one that I would throw all my change Aww. in through college, like high school and college. All my stuff went in there. So mm-hmm. that's cool. I decorated it, too. I didn't even notice that. 
I didn't either. <clears throat> it was teal, like a light sky, like robin's egg blue color. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then I know we, got we a, have... We got a weird accent from Amy. I, yeah. I, I, I caught it. For a second, it sounded like she was British, and she said... <laughs> Um, it's got long legs and arms, but it sounded like she said arms. And I'm like, it's like got long legs and arms, but it crawls on all four. Yeah. Oh, arms. arms. Yeah. Legs She's arms. describing this weird, weird thing. Yeah. Blech. I don't like it. Nope. I said, um, thanks. I hate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, then we go to commercial and when it comes back from commercial, we get and Amy grabbed this image of findings on the dead files investigation do not constitute evidence of a crime. So these are either things like Steve finds or hears from family or Amy channels and gets mm -hmm. because we've had that before where someone's like, I was murdered. And they're like, wait, she was murdered. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So not technically evidence supported at the time and right. may not be used as evidence if a case were to come about. But mm -hmm. still makes me go, ooh, ooh true crime. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, unsatisfying in this case. Yeah, a very. lot of times it is. Because yeah. especially if you're like, oh, my God, that sounds like that's, you know, done deal. Mm -hmm. But of course, nothing's going to happen from it because yeah. right. as, as it's 100 years old. Yeah. But in this that episode <laughs> was even worse. Like, I feel like they they were really struggling to get some information on yeah. things. And it's like. I felt why that did we too. spend why did we spend eight minutes talking to this a hundred percent because mm -hmm. I'm like normally when they spend time on stuff like there's a substantial we get a little detail or something yeah, there was I even in one of after we talked to somebody I can't remember who it was after her segment I said there was this segment was pointless like we didn't get anything from this segment mm -hmm. we could have left it out in yeah. my opinion I don't mm -hmm. remember who it was but oh it it was I mean it was almost all of it yeah yeah. But we do start talking with Abby at this point, and I know she's she moved in and has recognized problems with Chris and Emily's relationship mm -hmm. and Chris a little bit. Abby um, is Emily's sister. Correct. Younger yeah. sister. And she lives in the basement, which is a, it's a complete it's a finished basement. So mm -hmm. I always think when you think of basement, you think of the unfinished, like creepy stairs yeah. that something's going to grab your feet from under. Like she just has a sleeping bag in yeah. the cobwebs next to <laughs> yes, the corner. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> her and her son share the sleeping bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they throw food down the stairs but when I, they're done eating. Yeah. <laughs> the what I shoot. did notice with her is that she, her eyes kept shifting around the whole time mm -hmm. that she was talking with Steve. So it's, and she was talking about feeling like being watched right now. And she said, yeah, like there's someone in the corner and she's constantly looking around. So like you're, there's room for skepticism that you could say, well, she's lying and therefore she's just you yeah. know, trying to not be caught. She could be anxious with the cameras there or she could just be really uncomfortable that what she's felt before is there. So I didn't get a lying vibe from her. Mm -mm. I just I felt like she was nervous, whether she was looking at the production crew or, you know, maybe somebody was doing something off, you know, off the side saying talk louder or something like yeah, that yeah. yeah who knows yeah but i didn't i didn't get a lying vibe no her, but but uh yeah she did she seem definitely real was nervous shifty. yeah she yeah. was definitely nervous yep i didn't either it was just one of those things it's like well like you Someone if you wanted say, to poke yeah. holes into a story or anything yeah. that's where you could see because you could she just could not focus mm -hmm. on the on steve in that conversation yeah. she'd look at him a couple times but mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they talk about like, she's like, I have panic attacks and, you know, then I get sick to my stomach and nauseous. I'm like, that's, that's still panic attack, honey. Yeah. Like that's still classified in the same category. All connected. I used to mm -hmm. get it really bad and I would get so sick to my stomach. Yeah. I would, I remember sometimes when I, before I'd have to go run the 400 or something or four by four, I'd get so anxious about having to do well that I would just get it like chest to the top of my stomach. Mm -hmm. just, Mm -hmm. Yeah, yuck. But when I was in swim team and before I race, I had to poop. I'd get the nervous mm -hmm. poops. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Oh yeah. Um. So moving on from that. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <I'm a poop laughs> <top. laughs> so we, we go to Amy, who is like, I just want to be part of the conversation. <laughs> She's like these strange creatures. I don't know if they're. Demons or worse, they attack those who are already depressed. She talks about sleepwalkers. And then that's where she goes, I keep hearing murder. Murder, 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 murder. 
Like she just, <laughs> she said it like 3000 times. Murder, murder, murder. Yes. Yeah. So never a good sign that we have somebody's being influenced and murder. And then they expertly cut to now we meet Chris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Emily's husband. Yeah. Yes. Emily's husband. And Amy, I had tagged you in this, but like, you know, who he made, what he makes me think of is in Bly Manor. Mm-hmm. When you have the ghosts are influencing the children in the mm-hmm. show to do certain things. So they start acting differently because mm-hmm. I don't know. He seemed off to me like he didn't seem and maybe that was just his aloof dismissiveness. Mm-hmm. But he just seemed like he was answering the questions, but he was kind of like shifty about it. Hmm. Yeah, that's how I felt. I, I felt, felt like, like he was a skeptic and was like, yeah. this is all who. Yeah. Um, I felt like I he did was not. Greg. Yeah. Like a Greg Jr. Like not right. the level that Greg's at. Yeah. But like climbing that ladder towards the, yeah. the Greg level. Yeah. See, and I I got, and again, this is why we all ha- are able to <laughs> watch this and see different things. But I felt like he was saying, you know, he's like, well, I believe her, but so it's always the, well, anything mm-hmm. you say before the but, you don't actually believe. Right. However, I it, to me, it was like the... um saying the right things, like knowing the things you needed to say Mm -hmm. without having any emotion behind it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I had also had a beer by this point (laughs) as I was watching. (laughs) So, but that's, yeah, that was the one I, it just really made me feel like Bly Manor and like, because we've already been introduced that he may be being influenced. Mm -hmm. And in that the kids were being influenced by their dead uncle who wanted to basically kill the kids so they could get into the kids' bodies to come back. Mm. Spoiler. That came out like four years ago. Oh, okay. okay. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Could be. Yep. And again, we said this earlier, but he's like, well, it's probably the cat or, you know, I've had experience. <laughs> yeah. I, well, Steve asked him, well, have you had experience? He goes, well, I hear things when nobody's home. <laughs> oh, okay. And then That's he, he doesn't pretty... he say, what, what do you think that is? Uh, I think it's the cat. Oh, your cat's what, six pounds? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on now. I did think it was funny that once the client thinks it's the pet mm-hmm. and Steve is like, uh, dude, come on. <laughs> Come on. It, it's never the pet, Chris. It ne- yeah. <laughs> Chris. God. Uh, and, you know, we do learn from Chris. I don't know why he always, he always waits till, like, I feel like he usually asks the husband this question, but sometimes it might be the wife if the husband called in. He always asks the person later on, like, well, do you know about anything that's happened on mm-hmm. this property? At least mm-hmm. he didn't ask if, he, if there's been any death. If, if anybody died. <laughs> Anybody die in town ever? <laughs> nope. Never. We're all 700 years old. <laughs> That's still like the best still line. Like a day over 40. <laughs> that was still just my favorite. Like he's just like, they're standing like next to a cemetery. Anybody die here? <laughs> nope. No, these are just the for vampire show, town. Steve. Vampire Town. Yeah. That was, yeah. The, that was the Michigan Lake one, wasn't it? Like, <laughs> I think so. The yep. Lake Huron? Oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, Huron, Huron. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we, have to, we have to laugh now because it gets a little sad. Yeah. Because we do hear that the previous owner died by suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And just making sure, I know we kind of call it out here, but sometimes we've used the committed, um, and I know they use it in the language here, but what I remember is died by because committing is a crime oh yeah um i will say one thing i noticed is <laughs> chris is like i get just get tired a lot and i'm like mm-hmm. okay you have a three-year-old <laughs> yeah your sister-in-law and four-year-old nephew are living with you mm-hmm. you work uh and your toddler is having some sleeping issues well and it sounds like from another spot that his niece like his either his niece yes. or his cousin's yeah. daughter has come over we like yeah. get a little like tidbit of that but there's no Not, there's no there's explanation of everything they don't explain it so. yeah but like come on don't blame your tiredness on the paranormal because this is not paranormal right. at mm-hmm. least not all paranormal right. no that's like me going god i have a toddler but i'm just so tired i don't gotta be the ghost like i'm tired but i also was had my cousin's bachelorette party this past weekend right. so right. i slept great last night but yeah 
Yeah. I was up later for more nights in a row. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that part was annoying. Like, come on. Yeah. Let's be a little bit logical here. Which yep. for me to say that, you know <laughs> something's wrong. Because I'm usually the first to be like, oh, my God, it's a ghost. <laughs> it's the only explanation. <laughs> it's the only explanation. <laughs> you know, I, I, just reading through some of the script to, you know, as we kind of look through here with Chris and Steve and, you know, Chris is like, I'm usually fine when I'm away from the property. It's just when I'm here. It's like, okay, but again, you have some things that maybe drain you. But uh, Steve asked, well, um, have you had mold or anything like that in the house when you had it inspected? No. Mm -hmm. And Steve says, well, it doesn't sound like you're much of a skeptic. I'm like, are you sure, Steve? Because it sounds <laughs> it like he's a... Sounds like he is a super skeptic. Yeah. And Chris goes, I love my family. Do whatever I can to keep them safe. That's why you're here. Mm -hmm. Like, but see, again, that's where to me, it feels like he's being puppeted. Like, yeah. say these words because mm -hmm. these make it look like you care. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can be totally off. This is just my. Yeah. I only yeah. watched it once. I mean, I didn't get I got a skeptic vibe from him. I'm not going to lie, but mm -hmm. I didn't get the dismissal vibe like we've gotten from some other people who get called in. And then we talk to their partners and they're like, I don't fucking know what you're doing here. Like, mm -hmm. in not so many words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't get that from him. Like but Diane's I did husband? get. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I <laughs> did get. Husband. Husband. Yeah. A little bit of the the skeptic vibe. Mm -hmm. Oh, for mm -hmm. sure. The skeptic. Yeah. 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 I, I'm going to hold. I'm going to hold to my that dismissive something. Mm -hmm. Something just felt off. But, you know, when you get your when you get your hackles up, it's hard for the hackles to come back down. Yeah. yeah. I think he he's opposite of me. He realizes something might be going on, but doesn't want to admit it. Mm -hmm. And so he says, I'm a skeptic. I, I think it was the fucking cat mm -hmm. instead of like me who would be like somebody would say that was the cat. And I'm like, no, there's a ghost. No, there's <laughs> yeah. A ghost. Oh, yeah. So I think Megan, I literally watched the cat do it. Yeah, but the ghost told him to. So. <laughs> That's right. He's he's being possessed by jokes on you. Obviously, yep. obviously. Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Telling me it's not a ghost. No. Well, now we jump into part two, which is more of our Steve's investigation and Dig into the archives. I, Amy, you gotta you gotta explain your first comment here because <laughs> oh. it is so damn funny. <laughs> well, Steve goes, look, this is a v uh, voiceover. Look, I always ask homeowners for leads on history. Half the time they're useless. <laughs> and so I, my note was real nice, Steve, useless homeowners. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> like it was so spot on that I yeah. was cackling I was as like, I read that. I know. I, I, I commented rude, but I'm like, mm -hmm. Steve, come on. Like, yep. can you, can you maybe like tone it in a bit? Yep. You don't have to be so Brooklyn. <laughs> They're useless. Look, I always ask homeowners for leads on history. Half the time, they're useless. Useless. Those uh, useless homeowners. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. a title. There okay. we go. Homeowners. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's it. That's a good one. And just uh, this is kind of where that trigger uh, comes in. Yes. Yeah. We'll mm -hmm. be discussing with the Steve is discussing with the family of someone who and Amy, I know you have the note in here. Like, where did suicide come in? It's because yeah. Chris mentioned it. Chris mentioned that he died by suicide, but the coroner's oh. report says accident. So it's yeah. one of those like the story got told. May yeah, yeah. So I think that was a telephone game because mm -hmm. then the even the sons, as we get into it, you know. But Steve's I mean, like, the story does sound like a suicide. Yes. Oh, absolutely. So I don't know why. I don't know why it says accident. accident. Be yeah. But Unless somebody, I don't know. And my note in here was Steve is meeting with the two sons of the former house homeowner in the garage that he died in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was like, seriously, was there not a better place that they could yeah. have done this? Yeah. Because anywhere and, and, and even like the way that he was like, I know this is a touchy subject. Your dad passed away right here in this garage before we get to that. What kind of man was your father? Like there was a so yeah. much. And I get that this was a this wasn't that long ago. No. Mm -hmm. Somebody could have written this a little bit better. Like, I'm so sorry for the loss of your father. Um, there's never an easy way to discuss a loved one's passing. But could you tell us a little bit more about him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something like that? Or I appreciate you guys being here because he their dad died in 2011 mm -hmm. at 86. Mm -hmm. 
This came out in what, 2016? Mm -hmm. So we're talking less than five years from yeah. when their dad passed away that they're now sitting yeah. in the I, garage that he died in. Yeah. I will say later in the interview, one of the sons, they mentioned he does not get, he did not get along yeah. with his yes. father. It probably there it's was, not a lot of love lost. Right. No, but still. But still. I, I know. I'm just saying maybe that's the reason. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's all for production and they just could have done a better job with this. Yeah. They, yeah. they could have. Yep. So, and you've noted, Amy noted that one of the sons has also passed away at least since, since, the this, episode. since yeah. this episode came I out. I was doing a little digging on the family in the house and stuff and Evan, Kevin, I think Kevin is the yeah, one. Yeah, I think so. Who passed yep. away um, in okay, 2019. 2019. Yep. I couldn't find his actual bit. I found like a like the kind of old bit that that sometimes they put out on like mm -hmm. a, a website for the funeral home or something. And then people can go in and write stuff about him. Mm -hmm. But it didn't say anything about his surviving people or what he died of or anything like that. Yeah. So I, have, I don't have any more information on that. There's just that he I, passed away. I don't know. This whole this whole section was just like. So the dad, carbon monoxide poisoning from a running lawnmower in a closed garage. Mm -hmm. You would think, again, to your point, Amy, with it saying like the rumors of suicide, but the definition of accident, but the sons believed potentially murdered mm -hmm. or, or ki yeah, the cover killed, killed somewhere else and then put in the garage. But yeah, you, CO2, C carbon monoxide poisoning, CO, does specific things to your body a little bit that's why they can tell like there was carbon monoxide poisoning mm -hmm. and so like that's why I'm like well could they have just kind of knocked him out and put him in the garage with the running lawnmower because apparently it was still running when he was found mm -hmm. and by the way we're talking about potentially two women that were living in the house this is so weird like it was so jumbled and we got so little it information was, it was yeah. so hard to follow yeah, like, so the the dad's wife, the mom, obviously, uh, Barbara, she passed, and then within two weeks, what did he say? Yes. There were two 30 year old women living there with dad. Yeah, women in their thirties. Women mm -hmm. in their thirties, and we yes. know nothing about who they were, what they did, how he met them, where mm -hmm. they came from. We we just get the side of the story, which is probably plausible that they fleeced him out of everything. Yeah. Yeah. Because they say he pawned everything they he had. He took all his money. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it's at that point that, then that leads into the, did he die by suicide? Because he was embarrassed and he was, you know, at wit's end or those sorts of things. Did they kill him to get anything else that he would have had? Right. Or was it truly an accident? Yeah. It seems like a weird accident. I like it seems like a weird accident if you go to turn on your lawnmower. I'm guessing. I feel like riding lawnmower is my guess. It would oh. have to be. It would have oh. to be. So you know, like, and that's because I I'm feel like, like okay. a small lawnmower would not put off enough carbon monoxide right. to kill him. It would have to be a riding. Okay, I didn't even. I was picturing a. Lawnmower. Yeah. See, I was picturing you know a riding lawnmower and um I'll, the green one, but I won't say their name because they right. don't like. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm picturing. But then I'm like, okay, but if you're going in and getting your lawnmower out, your garage door is open. Right. Yeah. Because you're taking it out. Because right? you go, yeah. You're not gonna and, take it out the side door. But then that's where like I could see too, if he was sitting on it and he fell and hit his head or something too, that they could say, Oh, he, you know, hit his head here. Could that have been something like did they knock him out and bring like I that would have been on the autopsy report, though. You would think. There's too many yeah. holes in the story. Yeah. I mean, something's probably... not adding up. Yeah. I'm no mathematics, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It... Two plus two is not equal in four here. Yep. No. 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 And this isn't the first person that died in, in the house or on the property. The Their mother. So the, the two sons that are in the house with them who are in their 60s. I would say 60s. They're older gentlemen. Yeah, yeah. Both very, you know, bright, nice white hair. Mm -hmm. Their mother had passed away, you know, previously in the house. I think they said 2007. I thought she it was passed. 2002. So I thought it was 2002 as well, but they moved into the house in 92. So I think that's where I got oh. my mix up. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me see. I will note it. There is two. There are two garages as well. There's an mm -hmm. attached garage that's part of the house, and then there's an outbuilding. But I assume that it was the house, the one that they were, that was the one that was attached to the house. I don't mm -hmm. know that for sure, but okay. The transcript does say 2002 for when mm -hmm. she died. Okay. Oh, does it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. But they say 2007 later on or something. Anywho. I did not find anything about her death. No, no. just that she had a brain tumor. Either. She, yep, she had a brain tumor. And yeah, I tried looking up his too, and I couldn't find anything. I did find, I did not first, but then I went back and I found that he died July 18th, 2011. Okay. And then they put the house for sale. Because um, they, they would have bought it they in They bought it 2011, in 2011. Yep. And I noted that was when the man died in the house. And then, yeah, they sold, he passed in, they sold, okay, the brothers, mm -hmm. the sons, sold the house in December of 2011. Okay. And so okay. that must be when this family bought it. Yep. That makes Got sense. It. So, yeah, we're just one of those that we just don't get a lot of information about anything. We get a lot of speculation, but mm -hmm. no details. There was no mm -hmm. details no. about, like, who were these women? Why did they move in? All they just said is, and obviously they were estranged from their dad a little bit because they. They both said that. They, they were, you know, that trying to make somebody proud and you never get told that you're proud, mm -hmm. that right. they were proud of you. So That made me sad. I, I, yeah, it it's did. sad that that men especially of that age have to deal with that kind of mm -hmm. never being able to please their father and they try all their mm -hmm. lives and it never happens mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he said that's why he joined the military mm -hmm. to yep. try to please him yep mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, i assume dad was military probably yep. we right. move on, we move on from a very um unfulfilling story yes to you know that's where amy says that she's in the garage and she just feels saturated with dread basically like it's there's death and darkness all around her and now we swing over to meeting Catherine hopkins who's a genealogist and they're meeting at a cemetery because right. that's mm -hmm. where everybody wants to go mm -hmm. um and this one like my my side note on this and so we we are talking about a family that i feel like they always find a family that had like eight kids and mm -hmm. five of them died yeah. so mm -hmm. that's in this case they had four kids seven of them died but no seven uh, kids four of them died <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> i was already going on to my next point um which obviously is very sad but yes. we also have to think about the time frame that we're in mm -hmm. that making it out of childhood prior to the last 50 years even was pretty impressive mm -hmm. and that's there's why they had so many kids and it wasn't just farm families that had right. this many kids. And, you know, it's it, it kind of gives off that like, we'll just have another one. You know, mm -hmm. the replace the replacement vibe kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, well, yeah. I don't mean that, but that's kind of right. how it comes across. We've talked about this before, but it's just a reminder as to it's not because people only live to age 35 or 40. It's because the death age in child or the deaths in child were so rampant mm -hmm. that the average lifespan technically was always lower because you had so many that died so young compared mm -hmm. to how many got to 70 or 80. So yeah. that's and that's all throughout history. Like when we always we got taught that you people only lived to like 40. That's why you got married at 12. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> that's not, not quite accurate. So yeah. anyways, that's just my side note on this fact. But we talk about John Graves Martin, who owns this land from 75 to 19, 1875 to 1927. And we literally learned nothing. Nothing. <laughs> we learned nothing. Liter like We learned their name and that they had four kids die. That's about it. His name. Yeah. I mean, the family name, Martin. Yeah. But yeah, yep. the, that's all we know. Essentially, We, we know that. By 1900, 1900, he lost two children. And by 1910, he lost two more children. Mm -hmm. And we only learned one daughter's name, who was Era, and she passed away before 1910. But That's they it. didn't have to do death records or anything, but which also they didn't have birth records or anything, mm -hmm. which makes me think about like, I don't know if you guys uh, have listened to generally spooky podcasts at all, but they always talk about, oh, if, if you don't have a penis, yeah, nobody mm -hmm. gets to know about who you are. So there's just yeah. like a line in history of like Rebecca mm -hmm. married to so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. that's how you get remembered. But that's, we get nothing. We get nothing about yeah. how they died. We get nothing about, we don't even get anything hardly about the three that survived other than 
they, they grew lived up in, in Tennessee. Had, yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's this is the section where I was like, we didn't get much from this particular portion of this mm-hmm. interview mm-hmm. because I wasn't sure if we'd get more from her later. But like mm-hmm. this was just a time filler, in my opinion. Yep. Nothing. Well, we don't talk about it in the reveal, really. Well, the I only mean, thing that it connects to is because they jump to Amy, who's talking about the the violent woman again. Yeah. <clears> and <throat> she says she sees her at two ages. She shows young Mm-hmm. Where she's like in the eighteen anywhere from eighteen seventies to nineteen twenties, which ding 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 on the nose, and mm-hmm. then she sees herself as an sees this woman as an old lady, which is more recent. And mm-hmm. there's she has something against her father, and this is you know there's something she's talking about her father being a good man, but then her whole family got and is bleeped. But he was a good man, and the whole family got fucked. Like yeah. that's what it was, and. That's it. And so then she's focused on something. She's focused on a vendetta. She's fixated on the children, but she's protecting the children from the living male in the house, which then like I put in here is like, does this mean like if she, you know, she talks about her dad and being, he was a good man, but the whole family got screwed over basically. And then she's very upset about this living, like, did her dad kill some of these kids? Like. Did yeah. something happen? Did he did he sell them off? Because that is also a thing that happened during that mm-hmm. time. And maybe they didn't die. They just were listed that way. I don't know. Like, I know I recently learned my my grandpa. He's this first oldest of the second family of his gran- of his dad. And his dad left when his when his wife, first wife died, left his older boys with their aunt and uncle and moved away. And just like, they're yours now. And even when my grandpa was a little bit older, like they went off to go live with somebody else for a little bit because they had four boys. And so you go do something else. It was just, I know it's a very different time, but shit like that happened. So I don't know. Something just seemed, which we never find out again. We don't ever learn what happened here. All we know is that Eventually, he deeded his land or he sold his land to the city for like 30 bucks, which makes it sound like it wasn't very much. Amy looked up. It's under twelve hundred dollars today. Eleven one thousand one hundred twenty three dollars and thirty six cents. Yep. And that's really cheap um, because that's not just like an acre. That was more. We didn't even hear how much acreage it was. Wasn't it five hundred and sixty? Why do I have that? Was it? But was it the whole? Was, he didn't say if he so, sold the whole cemetery. Oh. oh, yeah. Well, no, he couldn't have because the yeah. client's house is on that. Property. Yeah. So he sold this. He sold the like family cemetery that was a part of the farm. Excuse me. And yeah. But this is where we get that really fun stipulation that he put in the deed when he yeah. sold it to the city. For whites yeah. only. Yeah. Only whites could be buried there, which is yep. just great. Mm hmm. Love that for him. So then what also mean like skipping over the whole racism part. Yeah. Um, There's enough of that. Does it, we don't need yeah. to talk about it. Doesn't that also mean that the cemetery should be pretty close to this family's property? Yeah, it is. Because I, I mean, it's, they don't it's, talk about that at all either. Well, t- yeah, I think he does. Doesn't he say this is right near their... This is really close to my client's property. Well, I mean, with the clients, they don't They oh, don't oh, seem oh, to mention oh, oh. Yeah, being yeah, yeah. near a cemetery or anything. No. Um, no, yeah, and I did look up the cemetery, and I could I didn't know that where the house was at the time, and mm-hmm. I didn't see a house nearby, but then I did find the house, but then I forgot to look at it and see how close it is to the cemetery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we get told also there's 860 burials here, so I don't know if that means that there's 860 people buried there, or if there was just that many ceremonies. Maybe they're doing them in groups. Mm. Like a twofer. <laughs> Just <laughs> like a throw bogo. the family in. <laughs> yeah. Um, Bo- bogos. I think that means how many people are buried there because you wouldn't have yeah. a ceremony if you weren't going to put the body there, right? Well, we've had cases where body was never found. But why would you have the ceremony at the cemetery when you're not going to bury a body there? Because people still buried a box for them. Or you have, you know, like three that maybe died at the same time. And I don't know, mm. I... It was for me, it was odd having the word burial, 860 burials there. I don't know. Yeah, it's just it didn't click for me. I know it's the right word, probably, but. 
Thank you for listening. The activity continues. We'll be back after this short break. Hi, friends. Do us and yourselves a favor and check out our affiliate, Three Spirit Drinks. They create plant-based, non-alcoholic elixirs that are cruelty-free and vegan. And they are designed to give you some of the benefits of alcohol without the hangover and other side effects. If you're looking to cut down on alcohol but still want the buzz, check them out. The link is us.com. Three Spirit Drinks.com and use the promo code The Activity Continues for 15% off your entire order. Unleash the power of stories anywhere, anytime with Audible. Immerse yourself in gripping stories, insightful knowledge, and captivating characters anytime, anywhere. Audible is your library on the go. With hundreds of thousands of titles across every genre, there's a world of reading waiting for your ears. Listen while you cook, clean, or commute. Free your eyes to conquer your day, all while feeding your mind. Start your 30-day free trial today and discover the joy of listening. Go to audibletrial.com slash TAC. That stands for The Activity Continues. With your free 30-day trial, you get one credit, two credits if you're a Prime member, good for any premium selection titles you like, yours to keep. You get the Audible Plus catalog of podcasts, audiobooks, guided wellness, and Audible originals. Listen all you want, no credits needed. Again, that is audibletrial.com slash TAC. Anyways. Anyways. We cut to Amy and she's like, uh, there's a lot of dead restless souls and they're from all over the time frame. And she's just like, something's not right here. Something, mm-hmm. something is weird. Something's not right. Mm-hmm. And lastly, we hear with Steve, we go to talk about a the brutal, crime. a brutal case and and this is but, one case where it is extremely yep. brutal. This is brutal. Yeah, I'm not this even going to be nope. like, Are we're not going to. No, they're we're all not going to go through. This is brutal. Yeah, this is uh, February eighth of nineteen eighteen. Jim McHaren was uh, Mc McHellerin, I think is the way he said it. Matt, wait, it's it sounds like Heron. It sounds like Heron on the It end. is Heron. It's Mc yep. McIll Heron. McHellerin. Yeah, McHellerin. 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 Anyways, I'm not okay. going to try and pronounce it. That Jim. Anyway, mm-hmm. the closed captions thought it was mackerel herring. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Like he's a fish. Yeah. yeah. No. But, but he no, he's was, a bird so, instead. So 1918, we're at the what height of World War One is happening. Yeah. Because that doesn't come into a close. Not for another eight months. Doesn't come down till or nine months. Doesn't come close till November. Yeah, but it's close for four years. We're in the home stretch. <laughs> but he's a black man. He's walking down a street, gets uh, attacked by three white men. However, he is an expert mar- marksman and he defends himself and he shoots back and he shoots six shots, kills two of them and badly injures another. So, of course, that doesn't go well. He tries to flee. They catch up to him. They drag him back. Um there was a crowd of 1,500 waiting for them at the train station or whatever when they brought him back, and they tortured him before they killed him. Yeah, really bad. So, mm-hmm. That's as much as we're going to yeah. I'm gonna And they show a picture, that. not of that lynching. Yep. The guy says this is not this lynching, but there here's a picture of something that happened like this. Mm-hmm. And they show it, and they zoom in really close. Mm-hmm. I did not take a screenshot nope. of it. I no, will not it be in our socials. No, it was disgusting. It was hideous. Yep. Um, that was... They also displayed parts of his... Yeah. Uh, they they took parts of his body. Yeah, people were in mobile stores. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Sick. Yeah. So, yep. And this is 100 years ago. And yeah. why does it feel like we're not that far mm-hmm. removed from this? I know. Because we're and, not. We're not. Uh, of course, nobody was convicted of anything because nope. obviously they didn't actually do anything. So I just said incels, bigots and racist. Oh, my. And I said great <laughs> oh phrasing. My. Yep. And uh, Amy channels. You can tell she's being tortured in this mm-hmm. channeling of whoever this is. Mm-hmm. She yells that they they cut the Achilles, mm-hmm. which would make it so somebody couldn't run away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we're going to jump to the reveal. Yeah. So. Because that's 
just awful. Yeah. Yeah. It was bad. Reveal. We are in a barn that is not on the property because, as I mentioned in the overview, Amy said, this is one of the worst investigations I've ever done. So therefore, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it there. I'm not going back. Yeah. Amy's like, yeah, no way. Mm -mm." I said, those are some damn strong words because she's seen a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She talks about the overwhelming feelings of death and darkness uh, that people can be, you know, everything that she said already, people could be influenced. And Steve's like, Chris is a skeptic. Yeah, I'm a see it to believe it kind of person. I said, oh, Greg. Yeah. Yep. Even if he sees it, he won't believe it. (laughs) That's why I was like, it's a step up on Greg. (laughs) (laughs) Greg. This is where this is where the 2007 comes around because Steve says that she died in the we go into Steve talking about the previous mm-hmm. family, the Dawson's, and he's like, oh, she died in 2007. But we heard 2002 earlier. Yeah, she had been sick. And then he talks about the husband and everything that was going on. And Emily asks a great question. So can the garage affect someone's personality? Mm hmm. And Amy says, yep. And Chris kind of says what's going on. But Amy just is like, yeah, I mean, like, that's great. But uh, you have somebody else you need to be more concerned about right now. And it's the dead woman who is screaming late and freaking out, charging, punching. She's fixated on the children, but to protect them. And she doesn't like the living adults, which is difficult because the living adults are also trying to protect the kids. Yeah, yeah. If we you would know, just communicate, then we I know. know. <laughs> There's nothing nothing new that we learn through here. They just, Emily kind of shares kind of what's going on. Amy's like, yeah, this woman's crazy. She's mean. She also has it out for the living male, basically. And she has a sketch done. And this ex- exchange to me is... So funny from Steve because he's like, well, this is apparently what she wants to do to you. And he's like, so she just wants to take me out. Yeah. <laughs> Amy just replies. Yeah. Yeah. The I yeah. love I actually really love this sketch. I, thought I it was, do, too. I was just thinking that you it's know, really I'll, cool art. It, it reminds is. me of like 1950s or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It looks cool. like a like a comic book villain Mm -hmm. the woman in the spirit in this makes me think of like a cross between ursula and medusa yeah Yeah. i could totally see because the the there's just shadows at her had her legs that look like the tentacles of ursula and her Mm -hmm. hair the way it's coming down it's in those kind of tight curls that come down Mm -hmm. it looks like snakes Mm -hmm. yeah and it was neat it was a neat sketch yeah and she's just uppercutting the guy and right in the stomach Yep. And he even drew it where it impacted him. Yeah. Like you can see lines yeah. come. It was this artist. And there's is not very extra talented. There's not extra fingers like in AI. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then Steve is like, Chris, did you think you'd be the target here tonight when we shut everything down? And he's like, No, I'm just here to support her. Are you really though? And then Steve again with the I don't. So do you have any idea who this crazy old bat is? (laughs) Yeah. Cool. And maybe Steve think about what happened to this person in life to put them this way. into. Yeah. And that's why people don't act like this in death out of. Yeah. For funsies. Right. So most people. And in here, Amy gives us a little bit more concise. Like this woman is probably from the 1870s to 1920. But she also shows me as being. When she's older, she's more recent. She's obsessed with her father saying he was a good man, but he the family got screwed and she wants to protect the children. And it's extremely important to keep them alive, which is, again, one of those things like. If she lost four siblings, no matter mm-hmm. how it is that they were lost, obviously she feels that there's something that she has to do to protect other children in her life. And we don't even know if she had children. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe the fear of seeing her siblings die kept her from having or, kids. Or she get didn't want. handed off as, yeah, you know, I don't know. I'm going to keep throwing that theory out there because yeah. uh, we have no records. We we truly don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. They could have been abducted by aliens for all we exactly. know. <laughs> Steve, Steve talks about John Graves Martin 
and that he lost children. But, you know, he had three kids that survived and two of them were daughters. This is the first time we've heard anything more than three children survived. Right. Mm -hmm. And supposedly it makes sense that this is Edna Martin who died in 19. She was born in 1995 and or 1985 and died in 1985. I caught myself and I came back. 1895 um, and then died in 1986. This is the first time we've ever heard a name at all yes, other than yeah. Era, the one who passed away. And he's like, mm-hmm. you told me sounds like Edna Martin. You have not mentioned an Edna Martin one time. No, no. And he probably they cut it. did. And it was cut. Yeah. Yep. And and that's like, this is where it's it's so weird because I, I just. Sure, it's her, but is it right? And Amy's like, yeah, I guess it feels like her. And she, you know, she punched me. She's warning. She wants everybody to leave. She talks about all these other things. Oh, they started talking about the vampire things, which that comes back to that small little blurb that we heard about the mentally unstable, Mm -hmm. potentially Native American spirits that were there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what she equates is probably that vampire like stuff that the kids see. Again, not a lot is is brought to us except that we kind of circle back to Chris. Like Chris is like the thread throughout yeah. this whole thing. Because yeah. Everything is connecting to him and it's threatening him. It's making him more dangerous. Um, Amy's like, yeah, whatever this stuff is, it wants to influence you to kill your whole family. Really? You don't sugarcoat that, Amy. <laughs> Just drop the bomb. Well, I think she was trying to keep it away and Steve kept being like, so let me get this straight. It wants mm-hmm. him to kill the family. Yeah. <laughs> I just fucking said that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yep. I also found it interesting. This is one of the few times I've ever heard Steve say, "Well, that's why I almost didn't have you here tonight, Chris, yeah. because you're a skeptic." I'm like, he makes that decision. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, found, I found that odd. Yeah. Maybe he does. I mean, he's listed as an executive producer. Yeah, yeah. I, could be. Yeah. Could be. Um. Yeah, so there's there's a few things that the family has to do. We get to, you know, okay, so what do you what do they have to do here, Amy, so that they can they can all stay here and live here and and actually live and not die. Mm-hmm. Um <clears throat> Amy gives them just a few things that they have to do and it's, you know, it ranges. So the first thing she says is the garage needs to be cleansed to remove the negative residual energy. Cool, that seems easy, right? Yeah. Then after that, she wants Edna gone. So they need to find a male medium with an authoritative presence to help her move on. But it could take a couple of visits because she's wicked. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, doable. Doable. Now is the tricky part. Uh, they need a team of people to come in. They need a Cherokee Native American medicine person or shaman to perform a clearing and removal ritual at the same time. And... A religious person, like a priest, to do an exorcism of the land, the house, and of Chris. Mm-hmm. And they'll know within a week if it's been successful or not. So we range from like, yeah, oh, that's not too hard to do, to <laughs> you need a lot. exorcism People and not even guaranteed to work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Emily's like, so what if we do all this and it doesn't work? Amy's like, um, get out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, she's just, you have to leave. She's like, she said to Chris, you'll end up killing your family. Mm -hmm. That's what will happen. Yep. 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 And then who put in the Yoda? Me. (laughs) (laughs) Steve goes, are you going to do this thing or are you going to say BS on it? And Chris goes, I'm willing to try. And Steve says, no, no, it's not willing to try. It's either you do it or you're not. There's no in between here. Nice. So I put in the Yoda meme that says do or do not. There is no try. Yeah. And. He's like, I mean, if it'll make me feel better. Yeah. And Steve's like, you're an idiot. This is like, you're going to have to get the exorcism. Yeah. Cause he's got like a smirk on his face. Yeah. Yes. He he's doesn't got believe a, it. He's got a grin and stuff. And so which ties back to how like reinforce how I felt earlier about him. But I was just like, get him, Steve. This guy just keeps laughing. Like, it's he's really, just kind of blowing it off almost. Yeah. It's rare for Steve, I feel like, to go after clients like this. Mm-hmm. Like, usually in the reveal, he kind of sits back and lets Amy take the lead. Mm-hmm. So for him to do this, like, 
I feel like this guy's really pushing his buttons. Yeah. Steve yeah. will go after him in the interview process and like call out their bullshit, but he rarely yeah. does it in the the final reveal. Mm-hmm. And you know, at the end here, Emily's like, obviously we're gonna do it. And Chris is like, it's crazy to me to think that this is happening to me. It's just hard to say no when everything you said is so right. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Okay, buddy. Sure. <laughs> And this is a weird update. Like update, I was not expecting this. I wasn't which either. Emily and Chris decided not to stay in the house. So they listed the house and must have been like February or March of 16. Yeah, it was. Uh, let me find my other document here. And then it said they moved back to New York. They. Uh, I don't know where they moved to. It didn't say that, did it? No, it just, just said, said they New didn't York. stay here. I don't remember seeing anything about New York, but it did. was that a different yeah. slide mm-hmm. at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yep. It I had only a different the, slide. It said yeah, New York. I didn't see it. I just the only what only one I saw was what was in there. Mm-hmm. The, but yeah, they they sold the house. They put it up for sale in February of 2016. And this came out in August. So that's sounds about right from when the filming would have ended. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. again. It sold March 29th of 2016. Yeah. That was, right. it was a good one though. It was wild. It was all over the place. It was, and it was, it, it just, it left you wanting so much yeah, more information. I, I would like to find these clients, mm-hmm. see what what's going down with them. And I wonder what happened to Abby, mm-hmm. you know, because mm-hmm. she, she moved there, she said to start a better life with her kid, which tells me there was an end of a relationship that she was trying to get away from. Where did she have to go? You know? Mm-hmm. Maybe, Maybe she, she went, went with, back them. with them. Maybe she went. Yeah, I hope she didn't go back. If it's... I love love how you guys both said that. And to be clear, like I I was saying I, that she went with the with her sister. Yeah, that's what I went, that's what yes. Megan said too. Oh, I thought you said went back to him. No, no. went with no. them. Okay. Went with them. No, yeah. and like like I said, to be clear, my my take on Chris is that he was being influenced the whole time. That it wasn't actually him. That's why mm-hmm. I have said the things that I have said. Mm-hmm. But. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, he was in the house and that's where he said things happened. So, yep. All right. Should we wrap it cool. up? Yep. So I can Let's go wrap, see my kiddo. Wrap it up. Wrap, wrap, wrap it, up. it up. Okay. So thanks for joining us, everybody. Next week, we will be releasing our live show. Otherwise, it'll be a sideshow episode number 14, where we talk about Who knows our live show. <laughs> but I think we're going <laughs> to we're going to release it anyway. Uh, so it, it's going to be a blast. And yep. so you will, you will be able to watch it live at the time, if you choose, on uh, Facebook. And I think Twitch we can do it on. I'm not sure about Instagram yet. That's going to have to be done separately because the software that I have does not speak to Instagram. So gotcha. that's another thing. It'll be live somewhere. Facebook, at least, for sure. And uh, and then we will, you know, take it, edit it and make us look pretty. And then we'll release it. Um, we'll release it that that following week. So Woo-hoo. that's what we're going to be doing. So so uh, send us in stories that you want us to read. We can read them anonymously and give you really fun names. Yeah. Yeah. Like Celine Dion. <laughs> that's right. When I do at work, when I'm talking about hypothetically things, all the people I give offers to are Celine Dion. Oh, OK. The uh, earlier or last week, I went with Luther Vandross, and I'm like, "Where the <laughs> fuck did that come from?" That's an old wow. name. That I don't even know any of his songs. I don't either. Wow, wow, no, <laughs> I know. Okay, anyway. All right. Well, happy spooky season, everybody. Happy we hope scoop, you're having a great spooky season. Scoopy, <laughs> scoopy, scoopy season. <laughs> I scoop chips in my mouth. <laughs> oh, that's what I want. I didn't have dinner tonight because I didn't feel oh. well. It was time to eat. Um. Anyway, so thank you, everybody. And thank you. We'll see you at the live show. Bye. 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 Thank you for listening to the Activity Continues podcast. We really appreciate you giving us your ears for a bit. Please feel free to drop us a note and say hi. And join us next time when the activity continues. Nailed it. If you're a regular listener, you know we love our three spirit drinks. 
They are the non-alcoholic spirit drinks that are taking the world by storm. Three Spirit is a range of three distinct drinks, each with its own unique flavor and effect. The Livener is a refreshing and invigorating drink that is perfect for starting your day or night. The Social Elixir is a smooth and sophisticated drink that's perfect for sharing with friends. And the Nightcap is a calming and relaxing drink that's perfect for winding down before bed. All three drinks are made with plant-based ingredients and are free from alcohol, gluten, and sugar. They are also vegan and ethically sourced. So, whether you're looking for a delicious and refreshing drink to enjoy on its own, or a sophisticated non-alcoholic alternative to cocktails, Three Spirit is the perfect choice for you. Try Three Spirit today and discover the difference. Visit us.3spiritdrinks.com and use the promo code The Activity Continues for 15% off your entire order. Cheers! Cheers. That one was the best one yet. 